welcome from the Churches of Self Witness on Sunday the 7th of February and to our Sunday service. The theme for today's service is the supremacy of Christ and Chris Holloran, the local missional leader at St Mary's in West Bank, will be uh, preaching today. Let's begin our service. We come together to rejoice in the God who makes himself known in Jesus, bringing light wherever there is confusion, darkness or death. We're going to begin with our opening song. It's uh, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, open my eyes, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. We come to our time of confession. It's right that as we meet to worship, we also meet uh, with God. And it's right that we bring to him the things that are on our hearts and minds that we need to confess. So let us pray together. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. 
So let us turn away from our sin to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And we pray, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to, his pray, to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to have our readings. Today they're being read by David uh, and Alwyn. And then Chris will bring God's word to us. This reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Colossians. Chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is taken from the book of John 1, 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Each of today's lectionary readings tells about Jesus being there at the start of creation. I am homing in on the Colossians reading, headed the supremacy of Christ. Paul goes straight to the heart of the gospel through the heart of his letter to the Christians at Colossae. Paul tells us why Jesus is great and why we must follow him and serve him. Jesus, 
the image of the invisible God, verse 15. Paul begins with the amazing point that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Jesus reveals God perfectly. The point is simple. If you have seen Jesus, you have seen the invisible God. In John chapter 14 verse 8, it tells us, Philip says, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? In Christ, the invisible God became visible. We need to consider why this is so great. As we are already noted, Jesus is our opportunity to see God. God was one of us, a human who walked the earth. Through Jesus we see God. If you want to know God, learn about Jesus. The point goes much further. Recall what God had commanded about images that represent God. In Exodus chapter 20, it reads, You shall have no other gods before me. You should not make for yourself an image of in the form of anything in heaven above or earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. But showing love to the thousands of generations, those who love me and keep my commandments. The people were not to have any images, no representations of God, no images of things in heaven or on an earth. There is no image that can properly reflect the, and express the image of God, except Jesus. Jesus is the image of God. Nothing else, no one else. Only Jesus appropriately reflects the character and nature of God. Verse 15 and 16, Jesus, firstborn over all creation. There are many false interpretations about what it means for Jesus to be the firstborn over the creation. Some falsely take Paul to mean that Jesus is the first created being. Of course, firstborn can have this meaning. However, firstborn is also used in the scriptures to refer to being supreme over F something. Notice the uses in the scripture of Psalm 89 verse 27. And I will appoint him to be my firstborn, the most exalted of the kings of the earth. Notice the point is being first in created order. Rather, being firstborn means that he is supreme over the kings of the earth. This is the point Paul is making in verse 15. Christ is supreme over all creation. Paul is distinguishing Christ from all created things. Christ outranks all things in creation. We know that this is the right understanding because of Paul of Paul's explanation in verse 16. Christ is the firstborn over all creation because by him everything was created. Christ is supreme over all creation because he created all things. There is nothing created that Christ was not involved with in creating. Things in heaven, things on earth were created by Christ. Things visible, things invisible were created by Christ. Christ is greater than angels and spiritual beings. Biblical scholars note that the four descriptions, thrones, dominions, rulers and authorities 
were Jewish terms used for various rankings of angels. Angels are created by Christ. Christ is superior to all these things in every way because he created all things. Paul goes further at the end of the verse 16, declaring that not only have all things been created through Christ, but all things were created by Christ. Jesus is the goal of all creation. Everything exists to display Christ's glory and ultimately he will glorify in his creation. Creation is to praise and honour Christ. Verse 17, Jesus, eternal sustainer. Christ is before all things. This means that he existed before creation. He existed before anything else. Christ is before all things in terms of time. He is eternal. He has no beginning because he was before everything. Not only is Christ eternal, but he holds all creation together. He keeps the cosmos from be becoming chaos. Christ sustains the creation. This is important doctrine uh, thought. Christ did not create the world and leave. He did not start things off and walk away. Christ is very much involved with all the creation. What is this telling us about the pandemic? He is here, reaching out to us to be our sustainer, wanting us to trust him, wanting us to have a relationship with God. Verse 18, Jesus, the head of the body. Further, Paul tells us that Jesus is head of the body. When referring to the body, Paul means the church. It's important to take just a moment to define what Paul means by the term the church. Unfortunately, religion has developed the concept of the church that is not biblical. Many make the church to mean some sort of institution as if the church were the corporation and Jesus is the chief executive. However, the word church in the scriptures simply means an assembly of people. Particularly the church is a group of people that are followers of Christ. Sometimes the scriptures speak of the church as all the followers of Jesus who have ever lived. Sometimes the scriptures speak to the church as the followers of Jesus in a particular city where Christians gather. Therefore, when Paul says church, Jesus is the head of the body, the church, he simply means that Jesus is in charge of our lives. He guides and governs his followers. We are not in charge. We are not the head. Christ is the head. Christ is in charge. It's a very simple yet important picture. Consider why this is important. What would, we, what would it mean if you were not to have your head? Sort of keep your head as everyone else is losing it. Fancy losing your head. What would happen to your body? You cannot exist, exist without your head. The head controls everything. Your body is completely and fully dependent on your head. This is the critical point that Paul is making that we can easily miss. We are incomplete without Jesus. We cannot exist without Jesus. We must stop thinking that we are the head and stop acting like we are in charge. We follow directions. We serve the head. The body does what the head says. Verse 18, Jesus, firstborn from the dead. As we pointed out before, the term firstborn has a broader meaning than just the first. Jesus was not the first person to be raised from the dead. We see Elijah miraculously raising a child from the dead. 
and we hear of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead and also the young girl from the dead. But Jesus was the first person to raise from the dead and never to die again. It is the implication of the resurrection that is the point Paul is making. Christ is supreme because of his resurrection from the dead, never to die again. Christ is preeminent in rank because of the resurrection. Notice that this is the point of verse 18. In being the firstborn from the dead, that means that he might come to our first place in everything. The resurrection shows that he is supreme in all things. Earlier we noted Christ is supreme over creation because he created all things. Paul continues to speak about the, the supremacy of Christ, noting that the resurrection proves that he is to have first place in everything. Christ is to have first place in our families. Christ is to have first place in our marriages. Christ is to have first place in our jobs and career, careers. Christ is to have first place of our time. Christ is to have first place in our hearts. Christ is to have first place in our worship. Christ is to have first place in our love. You name it, Christ is to be first, first place in everything. Christ first in everything else in creation. He must also be the first in our lives. Why does the resurrection from the dead give Christ supremacy in all things? Raising from the dead, never to die again, proves he is God. This is not the next po point Paul describes concerning Jesus. Verse 19, Jesus the Divine. In Christ, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. The simple point is that Christ is divine. Everything that makes God, God dwelt in Jesus. Jesus is God. The full nature of God is in Christ. Christ is the full embodiment of God. Verse 20, Jesus the Reconciler. Paul has spent all of this time praising the greatness of Jesus, the greatness and supremacy as a tangible benefit for us. Jesus has the right authority and power to reconcile. Everything is reconciled to him. For the, the to be reconciliation means that something has gone wrong. Why do we need to reconcile with one another unless something has gone wrong? Sin is in the world and sin has changed everything. Sin has changed the creation. Sin has changed the re relationship of God we have with us. We cannot have a relationship with God because of our sins. We have made the relationship go bad. Our sins have severed our relationship with our God. Remember what we have learnt. Christ is the head. Christ is the ruler. He is in charge over all creation and rules over all creation. Christ is to be the first place in everything. Christ is to be the first in our lives. But this has not happened. God has not been first and therefore we have severed our relationship with God. Christ has made peace between us and God through his blood in his death on the cross. Paul explores this thought further in the chapter so there's some homework for each of us to read the remaining verses. Christ is supreme and is used his supremacy to make peace between us and God. We deserve God's wrath for our sins. Christ made peace through his death.
So what is so great about Jesus? Firstly, when you know Jesus, then you know God. When you see Jesus, then you see God. If you do not know Jesus, then you do not know God. If you do not have a relationship with Jesus, then you do not have a relationship with God. Secondly, Jesus is the head and has first place in everything. Jesus must have first place in everything in your life. He created you and me and he must be first. And thirdly, we come to God through Jesus who reconciled us. Jesus is great because he made peace between God and us. Jesus brings us near to God. Jesus made a relationship with God possible. Amen. We're going to declare our belief in this God, this supreme God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, in the words of the Creed. We say together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'm going to have another hymn. It's my song is love unknown.
we're going to have our time of prayer, which will be led today by Janice. You sent your son to be the light of the world, the light shining in the darkness and the darkness never overcoming it. You brought light into our lives and now you ask us to be the light in the continuing darkness. At times we may be like a small, fragile, flickering candle and at other times a bright and strong beam of light. Lord, help us all this coming week to let your light shine through us in our words and in our actions. Amen. The response after the words, let us pray for light in dark places. Respond with Lord, bring light. Let us pray for light in dark places. Lord, bring light. We pray for all those who are in danger today, for those who live in war zones across the world, those who are refugees, for those who work in the emergency services and for our, our armed services. Let us pray for light in dark places. Lord, bring light. We pray for all those who are vulnerable today, for those who will go hungry, for those who are imprisoned for their faith, for the very young and for the very old. Let us pray for light in dark places. Lord, bring light. We pray for all those who are in need today, for those who are ill and those in pain, for the bereaved and those who are mourning, for those who dread the coming of the morning. Let us pray for light in dark places. Lord, bring light. We pray for our community today, for the misunderstandings that can separate us from one another, for the tiredness that we feel, for the hope we have lost. Let us pray for light in dark places. Lord, bring light. We pray for ourselves and those who we love, for the things that trouble us, for the things that we long for, and for all our hidden fears. Let us pray for light in dark places. The last 11 months have been very eventful, with full of challenges, we need light in the darkness and hope in the uncertainty that's all around us. God gave his son to guide us and we pray to welcome and appreciate his words more than ever. Jesus is God's greatest gift to us, but from the beginning he was rejected by many. We pray that we will have room in our hearts and our lives for him. Amen. And let's say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen we come to our final worship song it's uh, oceans where feet may fail
to the end of our service and I do pray that you'll have a good week. Um, we probably will be together again online next week, hopefully sometime soon we may be able to meet together face to face. But now it just leaves me to say this closing prayer. Well we come to the end of our service and I do wish you a good week, whatever this week holds for you. Probably next week we will be meeting again together virtually, but hopefully sometime soon we'll be able to meet face to face. But in the meantime, I do again wish you a good week. And let me just say this final prayer. Lord Jesus, go with us into the world this week. Help us to remain focused upon you and to make your priorities our priorities in all the places you are sending us. Amen. May the Lord bless you and watch over you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those whom you love now and always. Amen. So do go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.